Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here, and today we have the new hotly anticipated tier 8 premium German cruiser in port for you guys today, or Pocket Battleship if you're the British. That is the tier 8 premium cruiser, the Shill. This is the subject of yesterday's video talking about the Shill event, but we are going to be putting that aside and just focusing on the ship today. Uh, TLDR right now, if you don't get it in one of the containers, if you're not lucky, uh, you're going to be forking over around 100 bucks to get the ship one way or the other, either through the sequential bundles or apparently there is a admiral package in the armory that you can purchase the ship for. So again, if you don't get lucky with the containers, you're going to be paying about 100 bucks for the ship right now. Of course, don't get it right now. That's the only way you can get it. Wait for it to come out normally and just pick it up for the normal cost. But do you even want to do that? That's what today's video is all about, fellas. As always, a massive shout out to the channel's Patreons for making this review and all ship reviews possible on this channel. I'm not a CC, nor supported by, or affiliated with Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. So the generous donations from these patrons make these reviews and all ship reviews possible on this channel. It is the best place to support the channel besides, of course, just watching the videos and streams when my internet's actually good enough for me to stream. But anyway, again, massive shout and thank yous to those Patreon supporters. If you want to do so, link to that is in the description down below. So, the shill. The long-awaited P-Class Cruiser is finally in-game. Um, for those of you that don't know, the P-Class is essentially a, you know, a scaled-up Graf Spee. That's also a pretty good way to describe the shill. I have played it a bit so far, and we will get a f into that in detail in the voiceover review section. What we're going to do right here now in port is discuss the ship, talk about her stats, her armor, and her consumables, and then, of course, we will move into that gameplay review section. As always, the lovely, lovely work here from the art department. The ship looks immaculate. I gotta give them that. It is, man. What these guys do is nothing short of art. It is a beautiful looking model in game. And with the updated graphics and such, it looks, it, it, it's such a good looking ship in motion, I must say. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the shield now, shall we? Alright, so uh, let's start with, well, the exterior as always. For the economy, it does of course come with the economic bonus. It is a premium ship, 5% to the credits and 50% to your various XPs. I'm running the blue credit booster because, well... I like making credits and the green boosters on these. A lot of you guys ask me why the heck are you running this on a premium ship? Because all this XP that I earn here goes to, you know, converting that into free XP in order to get the tech lines and such when new lines get released. Because again, I'm not a CC and to get those lines as fast as possible in order to review them, a free XP. And of course, with the commander XP, that's for resetting uh, commander skills and such for various ship reviews and the like. All right. So. That's the economy for the camo. You do get an actual good permanent camouflage, which, uh, you know, that's getting rarer and rarer nowadays, unfortunately, with a lot of the ships that we're getting in the game, you know, post-World War II ships, radar was a thing, so optical camouflage wasn't really needed, but we get a nice camo set right here for the shill. That's the primary. Here's the secondary color scheme. It just makes it a little bit more blue, but we take the primary scheme because I like that color scheme right there. All right, so... Let's look at the armory now, shall we? The armory. The armor now, I should I should say. So you get a 27mm bow, but you get this giant 30mm plate in the front. Which means you're fairly tanky compared to most other tier 8 cruisers just from the bow on. Now, of course, there's a fair few ships at tier, especially you know, tier 9 and tier 10, that can just zip right on through that. But hey, you got 30mm mill uh, millimeter plating on your nose. Not too many other tier 8 cruisers can say that right so especially when you're a top tier oh boy you're a menace when it comes to bow tanking ap then of course the 27 millimeter bow line does continue up over here and the upper armor belt is 27 millimeters on 
the side that continues down the back of the ship to a 27 millimeter stern and you have these nice 80 millimeter plates over the steering gears so you get a pretty nice stern profile there a main armor belt is 120 millimeters and if we remove all this extra armor you will see that the citadel is behind this plate and it is just a little bit above the water, dare I say, almost dead center with it. But of course, with the way that the ship's going to be moving in game, you're going to be fairly exposed, right? So, yeah, yeah. Overall, I can tell you from experience, it's a pretty chunky ship when it comes to other battleships. But we'll talk about that uh, when we get to that portion of the review. The turret faces are 360, sides are 220 back is 220 uh the angled roof bit is 150 the flat roof is 130 and the angled roof bit at the edge is 150 as well the side slants are 150 as well all right for the survivor builds you have 44,000 hit points base and a 13 percent torpedo damage reduction factor for the artillery you get six 283 millimeter guns with a 20 second reload time and a maximum dispersion of 152 meters and a maximum range of 17.3 kilometers. The HE has a maximum damage of 3200, a 20% fire chance, and 71 millimeters of HE pin. And the AP has a maximum damage of 8400. Both the AP and the HE come screaming out of the barrels at 910 meters a second. Some very fast moving shells here. You have 12 of these 105 millimeter guns with 26 millimeters of pin thanks to the German HE improved pin rate and a 5% fire chance. Then the 2x3 150s, they reload in 7.5 seconds and have a range of 7.6 kilometers, 1,700 maximum alpha, 8% fire chance, 38 millimeter pin, and then 875 meters a second is the velocity on the 150s. The, the 105s, I forgot to mention, they do pin 26 millimeters of armor. Alright, torpedoes, you get 8 of the 533 torpedoes. Unlike a lot of other German ships, however, she does have a range of 8 kilometers, which is um, surprising. Most of the Germans, you know, even the you know all the other battleships and cruisers and such, it normally stops at 6, but she gets 8. Okay. Other than that, they are pretty similar to the German Torps. You get 13,700 maximum damage and a 65 knot top speed with a 1.3 kilometer detect and a 90 second reload time. All right, airstrike, you get two flights and there are um, one aircraft per flight, two bombs per payload and 4,200 maximum damage there. AA, you have 10 of the dual mounted 20 millimeter guns. Then you have eight of the quad mounted 20 millimeter guns four of the dual mounted 37s and then the 105s are dual purpose for an a rating of 61. you get an a range of 5.2 kilometers which is uh, well we'll talk about that maneuverability maximum speed is pretty quick at 32.5 knots before you slap the speed flag on a 760 meter turning circle radius and a 12.4 second rudder shift time Summit rating of 14.5 kilometers base. Now in the equipment, there's a bit of surprises. So you get two heels that regenerate 220 HP per second. And it, act, it is active for 28 seconds. Cools, cools down in 120 seconds. You get your choice of fighter or spotter. A very German thing. And then hydro DFAA. Again, another very German thing. The hydro is the nice 6 kilometer hydro that is active for 120 seconds. But then there's this guy right here in the middle, a main battery reload booster. It's a 50% boost to your reload time, so you get a 10 second base reload for 20 seconds. You time that right, that's three very quick salvos back to back with those six 283 millimeter guns. And um, yeah, 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 okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself here in the port section. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap my commander module build that I was running on this ship and we'll meet right back here. All right, so for my module build, I am running main armaments mod one. This of course helps keep our main battery guns and torpedo tubes in the fight. And those are of course how you do damage. So if you can keep those in the fight for as long as possible, you wanna do that. You get a 20% buff to the risk of the main guns becoming incapacitated, a 50% buff to the survivability and, repair, and a 20% buff to the repair time of both the main battery guns and the torpedo tubes. Damage con mod one, because well, fires suck and this ship does get the battleship burn time and well, 
That sucks, so we want to reduce the chance of that happening, and this does that by 5% and 3% to flooding. I took aiming systems mod 1, this helps rein in the main battery guns with a 7% buff to the dispersion, especially with the shill you only have 6 guns. So every shell that misses is that much more painful, and this helps negate that as much as possible. We then take Damage Con Mod 2 because fires suck, and again, the ship has a long burn time, and this helps us get that down by 15% for the fire extinguishing time, and a 15% buff to the flooding recovery time as well. We then get Consumer Systems Mod 1, which gives a 10% buff to our detectability, and a 5% buff to the dispersion of the... well, actually a 5% um nerf to the dispersion of the shells that are fired at us so yes that is very nice uh for the commander skills i went with a pretty basic um german command in fact this is my kind of standard german cruiser commander i would swap some things out but since i didn't want to pay to respect lucians because it's really only one of two things i want to swap i did it but i'll walk you through it here so definitely would take last stand this Keeps the engine and the steering gears operating at a reduced rate when those get knocked out. And I can tell you they get knocked out plenty in this ship. I would definitely swap Demolition Expert over for a Priority Target. Or if you just wanted to Hydro a lot, Consumable Enhancements is also something that I could see you going for. But yeah, definitely swap that out for Priority Target. That way you know when you're being aimed at. Shill is a chunky boat. So I would take that instead. But again, I just didn't want to pay to respect Lucian. And then, of course, we got to have all the lovely three-point cruiser skills. Uh, just, you know, in the, the order you want, would want to go, and I would definitely start with the Adrenaline Rush. Take Adrenaline Rush, get that 0.2% increase to, I'm sorry, decrease to your reload time for every 1% of HP loss. And naturally, with how chunky the shill is, you're going to be getting plenty of damage to do that. And then... Heavy AP shells, it's literally free damage for your guns, 5% additional dam damage to your AP shells, which are going to be the primary type of munition you are going to be firing in the shill. Then took Superintendent for additional charge of the heal, the reload booster, hydro or DFAA, and your fighter and or spotter. The ship has a ton, a ton of consumables for being a tier 8 cruiser. You want to take this so you can get additional charge. And survivability expert for 450 HP per teal for, for a nice buff to your HP. And then lastly, concealment expert down here with a 10% buff to the concealment. Um, gun feeder, definitely don't need it. You could drop that. And then you could potentially get maybe, uh, well, you could get the consumable specialist, which will help boost the reload time for, in, for the reload booster and the fighter slash spotter. Or you could, well, I'm not sure actually what else you do it, but I would definitely take Grease the Gears. That gives you a 20% buff to the turret traverse speed with Luchins. So, yeah, that's a solid thing when you only have two turrets on the ship, right? You want to be, get them where they need to be. I don't feel like having those two skills was detrimental to the ship's performance in any way. Like, it's not going to depend upon, you know, a single one-point skill and a single two-point skill to make the ship work incredibly well. I got a pretty good idea of how the ship plays regardless of that so the effect that this has on the shill so for the survivability we now have 47,600 hp that's nice healthy tier 8 cruiser uh the guns have a rotation time of 20.8 seconds now which is very very nice and the dispersion's down to 142 meters which again is lovely and the ap is up to 8820 8, maximum damage now and if you do take uh demolition expert you have a 21 percent fire chance of your main guns if you are wondering and the concealment is now down to 11.7 kilometers with the speed up to 34.1 knots with the speed flag and let's see the heel with the heel flag on it now regens 285 hp per second so there you go all right, so that's the build I was running on the shill. Let's go ahead and move over to that voiceover review so you get my two cents on the shill. All right, guys, voiceover Sea Lord here. And, well, it's a big spee. That is essentially what it is. But there are a couple other more nuanced things about it. But, yes, it is a big spee at the end of the day. The guns, however, unlike the Graf Spee, can very much hit what they're shooting at, which is a humongous deal when it comes to the Graf Spee's guns, because those 283s at Tier 6, 
if those suckers actually connected to where most Graf Spee players were aiming, Spee would definitely be one of the best tier 6 cruisers bar none, right? But you can't do that at tier 6, because you'd be absolutely walking over the poor tier 5 and tier 6 cruisers that get, you know, dumpstered by a single 14-inch shell, right? So... They couldn't make that happen for balancing purposes. And then the reload time coupled with the poor HE performance of the German HE means that it's not a great HE spammer either. But now at tier 8, when you're facing tier 9 and tier 10 ships, you know, those higher tier ships, you can have those 283s that are a bit more accurate and actually hit the target more often than not. So that helps the shield perform quite a bit better. Add on the fact that... It is, of course, you know, a bigger speed, you know, more HP, slightly better armor, and you do have the reload booster there. It's a ship that can be pretty dang scary in the right situation and can work very well when, again, it is in the right situation. So let's talk about my experience with her for the last couple of days that I've had her. Um, first off, ship catches on fire a lot. Don't know if it's just me or it's the YouTuber in, 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 in a new ship effect, you know, and everyone wants to murder you because you're in the new ship and you're, well, me, YouTuber. You know, you want to kill the famous person, right? You want to be the one to sink them. Um, I felt like I was catching on fire a lot. Again, that's not really a, a thing against the, the uh, shill other than the fact that, yes, it does have the battleship burn time and that does most certainly suck when that happens. Um, it's a pretty tough little tier 8 cruiser when you aren't facing those, you know, big guns, right? The, you know, the, the, the Republics and above, those 17 inch and above guns, it feels pretty darn tanky, which is what it should feel like, right? It is a, you know, P class, a pocket battle, battleship, if you will. Last time I said that, someone wrote like a three paragraph essay in the comments about how that's not the proper term for it, a bunch of British pro propaganda. Yes, but you see, it sounds cool, right? But anyway, so yeah, it, it does feel pretty dang tanky when you aren't facing those guns that, of course, just, you know, don't care about your 27mm stern or bow armor, your 30mm bow armor. And when you can angle, you can bounce quite a bit, which is pretty entertaining, of course, seeing a tier 8 cruiser just tank battleship caliber guns, right? So, of course, when it's coming, when it comes down to other cruiser caliber guns and their AP, of course, again, if you can angle, you're going to be, you know, tanking for days. But that does, of course, bring up the point of the gun placement. Just like the Graf Spee, you have two main turrets, one's in the front, one's in the back. Turret angles aren't that great. If you do want to get all six of your guns on target, you've got to show an uncomfortable amount of ankle and you are going to get slapped for it. Add to the fact, too, that, you know, it's coated in 27 millimeters of armor when it's not the, you know, the, the stern, I'm sorry, the, the bow plate or the, the stern steering gears armor. You're going to get farmed down by HE. It happens, it did happen, and it's not a fun time, of course. So there is that. It's a ship you definitely do not want to be caught out in the open from long range. Saying that, though, you might be saying, well, Sea Lord... A lot of high tier gameplay is running around in the open at long range. Yes. Yes, it is, which is why I selected the background game to highlight the shills, the, the real shill experience in higher tier, because this is what you're going to be running across a lot of times. You're going to go to a flank, your DDs are going to die, you're not going to get a lot of support, you're going to be forced to run. And your team's going to be stuck on one side of the map, sitting, you know, far away from the cap, not playing the objective. And you're going to be running around in a tier 8 cruiser in a tier 9 or a tier 10 game. Which, um, is not necessarily the way you get to have a great match. However, I was able to get the shield to perform decently well in this game regardless. And I wasn't... Uh, Quite frankly, a uh, worst case scenario. I went to the side that had the frickin' Georgia spawn in. You know, the cracked out American battleship that can run at 40 knots towards you, armed with 457mm guns, that of course can basically have your way with you, especially if you're a tier 8 cruiser, right? So, that wasn't a great time. But these guns, the guns are very good when they connect. I'm talking very excellent, right? Like, the 283s, they pack a punch, you know, six shells, 8,800 alpha with the skill, that's quite a bit of damage per salvo, and you have the reload booster, so you can get 
um, 18 of those shells downrange in, you know, 20 seconds-ish, right? That's a lot of pain downrange for a cruiser or for a battleship that isn't paying attention to you and you have their sides. And you'll see in this match what happens when those light cruisers, you know, goof up and show you their sides. It's, it's very good at what it does when the shells connect. So... The caveat for this, though, for, you know, the either the single salvo deletion or the triple salvo reign of pain is that the shells have to connect. And while the shell does have improved accuracy over the graph speed, much greater improved accuracy over the graph speed, there is still the frustrating occasion, well, it's not really an occasion, it still does happen, where the shells still have the goofy dispersion, right? Where one turret shells will have a huge spread, the other turret shells might be okay, but in my experience, it was like every other salvo, you get one of these stupid salvos, right? That's you're not going to hit what you're aiming at. Granted, you have a 20 second reload again with adrenaline rush, you know, and the way this ship is going to be eating damage from battleship caliber guns and HE, you will have a faster reload. And with the reload booster, if you have a prime time shot and you get a round of goofy dispersion, you can hit the reload booster. And again, at 10 seconds space before adrenaline rush kicks in, you know, it, 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 you can have some pretty quick follow up shots. So, unlike the Graf Spee, where you, when you have those perfect shots where you know, the, the cruiser's broadside to you, but you fire your guns and, you know, the shells go in the water, they go far over the ship, and you're like, well, shoot. By the time your guns reload, the ship's moved on. With the reload booster, at least, you can capitalize on those moments and make them stick a little bit more, which was very much uh, a reprieve to the frustration that the guns could present me with at times. So there is very much that aspect of it. Uh, the torpedoes as well, were surprisingly useful that eight kilometer range while two kilometers longer than the normal six kilometer german torps is still pretty short right but when you are like 11 12 kilometers away from a battleship or a cruiser and they're chasing after you, you know they're going full tilt towards you they're going to cover that three or four kilometers they need to cover to get inside your torpedo range by the time your torpedoes get there because your torpedoes only go 62 knots right so they're surprisingly useful when you're kiting and there's a couple of times that I've had quite a few ships just sail around to the torpedoes when they're chasing after me and they might have been 10 kilometers 11 kilometers 12 kilometers away when they initiated their pursuit but again they cover the range going full tilt into the torpedoes and well they eat them of course in drive-bys and brawling situations those torpedoes are very much the ace up your sleeve now obviously the situation where the shield does absolutely shine in as close quarters combat as does the Graf Spee. When you get to those sub 10 kilometer ranges and you're dealing with other cruisers and such, um, you know, light, lighter armored ships, it is quite a, the fearsome ship. And with the torpedoes, you can even take on some of the, you know, like some, uh, some of the not so armored up tier eight battleships, even some tier nine battleships too. Again, with the torpedoes, you have that ace up your sleeve and it's the, the quad torpedoes, not the triple torpedoes. So, you know, Four tubes, 13,700 damage, a torpedo. Yeah, that's quite a bit of punching weight that you have at your disposal on top of these six 283mm guns with a good alpha and the excellent, excellent velocity that allows you to punch through that armor quite well. So, in those situations, yeah, the ship is really freaking good. But of course, unfortunately, those situations don't happen too much anymore. And with the poor HE performance, yeah, you know, the 20% burn uh, burn percentage on six shells, that ain't great. And yes, you do have the reload booster, so you have better fire potential than, like, the Graf Spee, of course, but the HE still isn't great, right? So, the reload booster, I'm not really sure if you really want to use that at all when you're using the HE, because it's probably just a waste of the reload booster, unless there's a battleship that's just refusing to show you any type of angle whatsoever, he's dead bow on to you, and you just, you know, you, you gotta set him on fire. Sure, at that rate, yeah, use a reload booster for that, but I really would save it for those AP slaps on the broadsided uh, ships that goof up and show you their sides. So, that also means, of course, the ship's not that great with dealing with destroyers, because the two turrets... Three guns per turret. Destroyers roll up. You don't want to show them the second turret. I'm sorry, you don't want to show them enough angle to get the second turret out. Because then, well, they're going to say thank you. And then dump torpedoes into your side. So you're stuck with one turret in the front. 
firing either AP or HE, and that's yeah, that's kind of miserable. The secondaries, you know, maybe when we get the new secondary skills, we can probably do a bit better in terms of performance if you build into them, but they're more of a minor nuisance to the DDs, it seems, right now, than an actual, you know, like, death machine as they should be. But unfortunately, again, they are not that right now. So, with all that said, the shill is a pretty decent tier 8 ship if you can pick it up in like the first three or four containers the first three like stages of the sequential bundles yeah sure it's an excellent deal and when it does come out for full release at the normal you know 50 51 48 us dollar cost whatever they decide to list this thing as in the premium shop when it comes out what do i think of it and do i think it's worth it i think if you're a graph Shree fan or a history buff, you know, you, you've seen all the documentaries on like, you know, the, was it the, the Z plan, you know, you've probably already got in your mind that you're here to purchase this ship. And you probably have either have already gone through the sequential bundles or you got lucky enough in the containers to get it. So you guys already made up your minds. But for those of you that are just interested in the ship as a potential premium purchase, um, I would say if you have played the graph Shree and you're okay with that gameplay style, if you understand that this is a ship that only has three guns that you can use at a time in some cases, and if you use your all your six guns in the wrong case, you are going to pay for it quite fully because the armor is quite chunky. If you understand that and know that it's a situational ship that when you get in those close quarters switch situations, it's going to shine quite well, but for a good part of the match, it's going to be kind of unusable or very frustrating to use. If you're okay with all that, it's a decent ship, but there are much better tier 8 premiums out there, right? Like, Otago is infinitely better than this thing, and much better for the current meta as well. Mainz is much better if you want a German tier 8 premium ship. Mainz is glorious, right? So, there's quite a few tier 8 premiums that I would buy before you get to this one. However, this is not a tier 8 premium that I wouldn't pick up, because it's got all the goofy German stuff on it, and I do enjoy this place style. So, if you're a normal viewer here on the channel, and, you know, you're one that likes the same playstyle as I do, which is in that mid to close range brawling playstyle, then, yeah, you probably will want to pick this up at some point. Um, honestly, I would wait for it to go on sale before I would fork over the, the cashola for it, especially because it's probably going to be like, you know, a 50 $51 ship. If you're dead set of buying a tier 8 premium ship, this is not the one to get. Again, Otago, that's an easy answer right there. That's an excellent tier 8 premium ship uh, all in all for the cruiser class, of course. But yeah, I, I, I would definitely wait for it to go on sale. It's a fun ship. It's a decent ship. It's good in the right situation, but just with the way the high tier meta is, it sadly isn't really going to be shining in a lot of cases. There are situations that you will get into in it that it will do great, but for the vast majority of tier 8 plus games, it's going to be really struggling in my opinion. So overall, I would give the ship a 6 out of 10 rating, you know, one point for each gun, right? <laughs> but it's not bad, right? 6 out of 10 is above average, and I do find this ship to be slightly above average, you know, excellent in the right situations, but again, with the way that high tier games go, it's about a 6 out of 10. Pros being the 283s, they are some very accurate 283s. Um, they do hit very, very hard when they do connect. That does, of course, lead to the overpins as well, thanks to the velocity, but that's standard German AP, right? Um, the armor is it's a very tanky for a tier 8 premium, so you got that going for you. The torpedoes, the 8km range, they're great for kiting or great for that up-your-sleeve moment when you are brawling. It's got every freaking gimmick the Germans got that, can, that they can bolt to the deck. Uh, they got the Hydro or DFAA, Fighter or Spotter, and of course you do get the heal. Uh, the cons being the very awkward turret angles and the fact that if you want to use all six guns, you are going to, well, be in a very awkward situation, especially if there's a battleship that's stirring at your side. And the fact that, of course, the turret placement does make the whole ship kind of awkward to use, and the fact that it does only get two hills. I, I, I really feel like they could have given this thing three hills base, but, like, I don't know why they only gave it two. Uh, this is one of the ships that I find myself running out of heals in. Uh, most ships you take superintendent because you think you need that that last heal, and in a lot of cases you don't get to use it. But of course, you know that that one game where you are actually going to use all your heals, you're not, you know, and you don't take superintendent. That's the game you're going to need four heals or five heals, right? So I, I felt like giving it a, a, another heal would definitely help out a lot. But 
Eh, it doesn't. Uh, the second is unfortunately, again, uh, it doesn't get the 128s. And, you know, it, it is a tier 8 ship, so I can see why they didn't want to give it 128s. But I feel like you could have done it. It would have been fine overall. So, that's the shield. It is a ship that's interesting. I think, again, it's above average, but one I would definitely wait to purchase. Wait for it to go on sale until you have a coupon to get it. And definitely not my first tier 8 cruiser purchase if you're looking for a premium cruiser that is a lot better tier 8 premiums out there again mine's great tier 8 german premium cruiser that will do you very well in this meta or the prince organ prince organ is another solid choice too but anyway that's my two cents on the show guys let me know what you guys think in the comments down below hope you guys have a wonderful thursday a wonderful rest of your week I hope to catch you guys in the next one <laughs>